A jewellery box, of course, yes. Well, it's got a ring in it, hasn't it? Or um, a necklace or a pendant or something. Well, you know me, it's got to have something a little more interesting than that. And, oh, yes, of course, a hexy lexicon. Well, what else? <laughs> yes, this is made by Rick Flowerday many years ago, and it's a lovely bit of jewellery, but look at the creature itself. You're supposed to put a little tiny uh, chain through it and hang it around your neck. But it turns around like this. It's a really nice finger fiddle, and it forms triangles, and then it forms a solid triangle like that, but with little legs to it. And then halfway around, at that point there, although it's hard to see it, that actually is a cube. But it's got a large slice out of there and a large slice out of that corner there, but the other corners are all there. And you keep turning around and around and around, and then it repeats itself. Triangles and cubes and hollow triangles, and that's a hexaflexion, so it'll be a six-sided figure there. A beautiful item of jewellery, so something that's worth keeping in a jewellery box, I think. I'll show you now a larger version of that, along with other... Uh, topological toys that I've been collecting over ooh, many years. This is the same thing but a much larger version and this is such a popular item since Rick was the first really to popularise them that I don't think it's ever dis disappeared from the novelty shops. It's always around amongst the executive toys. It's a typical finger fiddle. You just play with it like this, finger fiddle, 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 fiddle and enjoy the manipulation and the changing of shape. The one that's most surprising to me is a nice hollow triangle is the halfway point here where it actually forms a cube. That is actually a cube, but it's got a great big gash here and a great big gash there, but the other corners are all there, which is interesting to see. So he said to himself, yes, that's a hexaflex, so it's got six sides, but what about an octiflex? So he had a go. This is a big square job, octiflex. It does the same thing, except it doesn't go into a cube, it goes through a sort of box-shaped thing, but it makes some lovely, lovely shapes in between, including octagons and so on. Very nice, and lovely thing to fiddle. It's got some beautiful shapes as it come out, comes out of the centre, rolling like a smoke ring. Very elegant and very beautiful. Fantastic, I love these things. Then Rick had another go with spring wire made a Mobius band, would you believe? These are turning round and round and round, all beautifully just put together. There's about 30 pieces, I think, all together there. And they roll exactly like a Mobius band would be if you made a Mobius out of nice, thick uh, plastic um, strip or uh, cardboard and you rolled it round like that. That's the effect you get very attractive. The Mobius version was spring wire. And the last one he gave me was this one here, just called Worm. <laughs> it's very sweet because it does pack up uh, like a little stack like that. But then it undoes and then you make little shapes and things. And as with the other ones, you fiddle with it. You'll just stand, sit there fiddling, fiddly, fiddling. It's got little joins here. I think it's got a string going through it because each of them is just a little, a little right angle and makes fiddle fiddle fiddles and he calls it the worm. So, a nice one. So, I've had some lovely, lovely times with Rick finding interesting things he made on wire. There's another wonderful geometrist, uh, Costic, John Costic, who makes extraordinary things. This is one of the ones he popularised. This is quite a well-known piece because I've had something like this, I've seen it in the form of an African table with a strong ring around there. That actually is quite a nice strong table because the centre can't spread out anymore. So you could use it as a, well, um, as, a, as a rest, well, I could use it for, for instance, as a, as a phone rest, couldn't I? There we are, that's a good, it's a typical mobile phone. But, oh yes, I've forgotten, of course, it has a camera on it, so yes, well, <laughs> perhaps I can start making my own home movies. Mm, that's a thought. But a nice thing, don't it, to hold something like a, like a mobile phone as a little rest, keeping it off the table. A much larger version, which is this one here, was also made by John, and it doesn't need a central ring, but it's just a lovely item because it's a sort of multipolded star. What's interesting about it is you can take any area of it like that and clasp it and it will fold. And it's, it's got multiple axes for folding it. Any way you like, you can fold it like that. But the, 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 uh, the actual wires themselves are superbly constructed and the way they're interlinked, and again, a good finger fiddle, is just tremendous fun to play with and to look at too. I got one out of the Japanese market a few years ago, which is made of, not of spring wire, but of bamboo. And it's got little joints here, which are made of, I think, latex, little latex tubes. But it opens up in very elegant ways in geometrical situations, which I would struggle to find the names for. But some of them are extraordinary, and to, to a real true geometrist, I'm just an amateur, is it? They say, oh, that's such and such a shape, and that's such and such a shape. And this is a lovely example of perhaps cross culture from a completely different culture, finding joy in making geometrical objects. And it all goes back into a nice little neat bundle. That's what I like about things, when they collapse easily enough 
he just collapsed like that and boom, it's so easy to store them when it's like that. <laughs> the last one to show you is something from Dennis Drehead, who I stayed with. He used to work with Buckminster Fuller, ooh, about 50 years ago when he was a young student and uh, helped to devise the dihedral hinge. This is something I actually watched him making it in his house in, in Bethel in Maine he lives. And I thought, what an extraordinary thing that is. You open it up like that. So far so good, that's halfway there. And then you've got to get two halves of the thing, which is sort of like this. And when you wiggle it a bit, it turns into a three-dimensional object. Look at that, for goodness sake. That's, the central bit is beautiful little sort of six or eight pointed cusps. I'd love to get a little balloon in there and show that space in the middle there like that. But there's a series of sort of apertures which are either four-sided or three-sided all the way around. There's a three-sided triangular one and there's four-sided. And it makes a fantastic shape like that. And he was actually making this in his, in his living room with a, with, a large, with a large soldering machine and a high current electric soldering machine um, as I watched. Let's collapse it again and see if we can get it to form its original shape, which is something like that. And then we can, yeah, look at that. Isn't that brilliant? So that's why I love wire, particularly wire topology. You get some, some extraordinary shapes, have a wonderful time, and it really inspires my, my thinking. Do you like it?